Hello, so uh, I'm going to show you some ways to level up athletics. Um, there's two places you can do this. One location is just north of Zestea, which is near Poros. Um, and it's, you, you need a map, so you need the map in this location, um, north of Zestea. And it just goes in this, this area here. You've got some quite small stats of leaders and stuff, so you can run easily. It also uh, is around Sabir, so I think visit between Sabir and Balgad. Definitely in this area east of Takar and between Takar and Alabat, you have this same map. You also you have 45 stats of looters there if you want to take on the bigger stats. So there's a couple of, there's a couple of different methods to training athletics um, that you can use, uh, but for all of them you're going to need to have a low weight. So the best armor for training athletics is this sumptuous quartered armor. Um, so if you want to really grind it, you really need to have this. There's also another one called the Thick Brigandine Vest, which is pretty good, quite light, and has decent stats as well. But this one's the best. It costs like 7 mil or so. So pretty expensive. Um, the first method is uh, my favourite, which is um, Throne. So you want to take the looters north of Zestea, otherwise uh, you'll get a bad map, which does not have a big rock on it. So. You go into the battle, charge your companions to get rid of them. Ah, the uh, the location you, you spawn on this on this map has changed. Normally you would spawn a bit further back, back in the old days. But, so yeah, what you do is you get dismount your horse here, and then you wait for these guys to get a bit closer. I do have two hundred athletes already, so I'm pretty OP. But hopefully you can understand what I'm doing. So you just wait for them to get closer. The horse will block the stones. And I like to go first person for this. And of course my first hit will miss. But this is my first time doing this in like six months. So you just go and give them all a little bit of a headshot. And some of them are missing. I'm not really aiming very well. And this is actually the best way to train throwing as well, in my opinion, because you can do a lot of very small, uh, small battles. Uh, the only thing is you're going to have your druids or whatever you're using uh, get damaged, and then you just want to finish off the looters by whacking away. I like to use them in Avalion for this, because it's really cheap. And as long as it one shots, you don't really care how much damage it does. So yeah, so that's throwing. Uh, I'm going to change out my equipment. So our next, the next pop, my next favorite one was um, bow. So you do need 70, uh, 70 bow to do this one with a noble on bow. There are some worse ones that you could use instead. I've also brought up the multiplayer debug uh, menu, so if you see that um, you can track the game time here, so currently it's at 4.8, so that means um, I'm close to a healing tick. The healing tick happens at the hour, uh, so at 5.00 there'll be a healing tick or shortly after. So I'll just wait for that because uh, I'd like to be on, on the maximum health. And it's also more efficient because you spend less time healing if you know you're going to get a tick soon. So, there we are. So, I'm going to attack these looters. And yeah, always make sure to bring a melee weapon, otherwise, you could be in trouble. This map has got trees on it, which is not normal. They've changed this. I like to use the stat poking arrows uh, because they've got the most arrows, but the piercing arrows have technically got better stats. So you may want it, may want to use them. In basically, you just want to uh, aim for the head on these leaders and just shoot them all in the head. And once they start throwing, you can hide behind the horse. And then my character is a bit tall, actually. I probably should just reduce the height next time. Because the horse wasn't quite tall enough to hide behind. 
This is how I do the. Uh, this is how you do bow. If you get all the headshots, you can get decent XP rate, but it's still very slow. It took me like two months to get bow 200, which is uh, pretty depressing. But that wasn't doing it all full time. An hour a day or something. Alright, so still 100% HP, so now the other one I wanted to show was uh, crossbow, so that's basically just a, um, a repetition of the, the bow skill. But I'll just show anyway, you do want to have one which you can uh, you can reload on the move, so that would be the fine light crossbow. There is also one which is a, called a light crossbow, you can reload on the move. But I don't... Uh, I, I like the fine light crossbow because I've got one that I crafted myself. So if it gets broken, I can just repair it quite easily. And, you know, Alien, is, Alien and Companions, they're useful, but uh, they do waste a bit of time at the start, unfortunately. So, just shoot these guys. It's not as, it's not nearly as fast as a bow. You don't get as many, uh, much ammunition and you seem to do less damage. I mean, you could use a bound crossbow for this, but it'd be really tricky because you can't reload on the move. But the bound crossbow's got maybe an extra 20 30 percent more damage, so it's not really worth it to use that. This is probably the best. Just want to get a headshot on them. I would not recommend doing this against the 45 stat because they're. Uh, if you go do like a larger army, then they can come around and rock against you. Like, uh, then come from behind you, basically. Alright, that's that done. Um, I also want to show the... So the Vulge has got quite good stats. Um, it's got really high cut damage, and I can also show you... Ah, yeah, the Immortal Can, so that's a good, good uh, weapon as well. So I'll show you the, uh, the Vulge first, but... Basically the same as when I use a Manavlion. It has the highest damage and it's really short and fast. So you can just, if you want to level up Polearm, then this is what you do. Manavlion does feel a bit faster though. Maybe that's just me. This has got much higher base damage. Although most people don't even want to be using the Vulge. Uh, oh, what was that? 71. There we go, 257, that's more like. Just, uh, I mean, I've got two and a half later, so I can do this much faster than uh, someone who's just starting. But yeah, you can just run around the rock. I can see that the game hour is almost near the hour. I wonder if I can make it back to the, uh, the village in time. It's two and a half minutes per hour, so I've got like 15 seconds. Run for the hills. Go, go, go. Although if, even if I wasn't in the village, I would still get to max healing. Max health in the next tick. And... Yeah, the last one I want to show is the sword. It is a little bit sketchy because it's uh, quite a short sword. What is going on here? Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is I always find this to be the trickiest one to level up because you get damaged quite a lot by the enemy because the sword isn't as long as the bulge or the uh, or, or using a ranged weapon. I did have a healing tick, so my companions are taking a while to die. Come over here. 
Jesus Christ. Um, I do like using more clan sword because uh, it's got quite high damage and you can't drop it because it's Patreon. Come on. Basically just uh, the Vulge again, but uh, you do less damage. 100, 150, 99 with the kill. I guess that guy got a punch from one of my companions. Why is the punch you that much damage? I mean, with the with the melee weapons, you can take larger stacks because otherwise you spend so long in loading screen. It's not really worth it. Um, and I think that's all of the uh, the methods. Yeah, bow, crossbow, throwing, uh, pole arm, and one-handed skill. I mean, there is a two-handed weapon. Hmm. I've never done that before, so I can't really tell you, but it's probably just the collectible two-handed sword. But, yeah, so that's that. Have fun.